it called? Like back in like the 20s. Wait, can you look at the camera and say what it's called again? It's called the Gamora. Count Films TV, y'all. What's up guys, William Tacky here at Brazilian Fight Factory. I'm a black belt under Rodrigo Cabral here in Austin, Texas. I've been training for a total of 12 years now and I'm covering class for my professor because he is out coaching my training partner Cody Steele at a UFC Fight Pass, some tournament out there in Las Vegas. So Cody's going to be out there competing. My brother just got done competing so he's taking some rest. So here I'm going to be covering some cool gi techniques. I'm going to work a configuration with a lapel on a kimura from top side control and um, you know we'll get to warm up in, work the technique, get some drills in, and then work into some rolling. So tune in and hope you guys enjoy. Start our jog. Let's get started, guys. Yeah, just grab. Um, yeah, you can put down again. What you're trying to do. Is you're trying to think like there's a blade on this side of his neck or that one, no? So you're dropping. And then now you're going to push his neck into that blade. So that's what's kind of choking up. You're pushing him into that lapel there. And there's tension on it because you're grabbing it. So when you drop your elbow, this shouldn't choke him, but the circling motion is what should get the choke. Okay? Don't need to do that. This one's just good to pull him up on the side. That way you kind of get the choke and then the same back down. The move you're teaching today? The Gimora. It's got the Gi, the Gimora. Oh, no, you're not going to add Tackett though? The Tackett Gimora? I call it Tackett Gimora. I, don't, I got showed by somebody this a long time ago. So ah, okay. I don't want to take credit for it. But, okay, but we're uh, renaming I made the name nice. Gimora. Gimora. <laughs> you said he's too nice. He's too nice. He is. <laughs> so um, while we're circled up for technique, just make sure we're stretching. I would recommend just sit on your butts, both legs wide, stretch down the middle. But um, we're going to work some side control submissions today. Um, some really fun stuff. Can I use you, Zach? Thank you, sir. All right. So we're going to start in top side control. We're on our partner. So defining side control. First things first, I need to understand where my lower body positioning is going to be. So for me personally, I like to have the knee that's closest to the head wedged in between the elbow and their lat. That way I'm in the armpit here. And I'm in contact with him. If I have a little bit of space, it makes it easier for him to get that elbow in and start using that frame to escape. So get that knee to the inside. My opposite knee is just gonna meet the hip. And no matter where he goes, if he shrimps away, I just kinda wanna always follow him with that knee on the hip to maintain that, that um, connection and I don't lose that space there, okay? Now, I need to get chest to chest connection here, but I don't wanna be leaning forward like this with my butt far off my heels. Cause then when I hug him, I don't have any posts. And if he rolls me to one side, I can lose my balance. So whenever we're in top side control, it's important that we don't lean forward to put our weight in our partner, but we sink our weight back and then just place our chest on our partner here. That way my weight's evenly distributed and I'm not too far forward. When you guys lean forward trying to put your weight on the guy, that's where you get rolled. So always be aware of that. Sit your, heels, sit your butt back on your heels, make your knees nice and wide, and then your chest can drop on your partner. Now from here, my hand is going to go underneath my partner's head. My other hand is going to go underneath their arm here. Now this is a really important step for understanding side control because if you don't have a hand underneath the arm and you have both hands over here, my partner has an underhook. And this is probably like the worst thing that you can give up in top side control because when you give up the underhook, gi or no gi, he can just turn onto his side and get to his knees and then now he's on my back. And it's not as bad as a frame. A frame, of course, he can get out, but he gets back to his guard. With an underhook, he gets to my back. So that's a lot worse. So always make sure whenever you're on top, you have that underhook here and you prevent them from pummeling to the inside. So close that space with your chest, keep the underhook. And I like to lock a gable grip. So that's palm to palm, no thumbs. And then you can kind of secure a nice and top position here, okay? So now that we understand side control, we're gonna move to like a reverse case of katame. So a case of katame is me on my hip facing his head. I'm gonna switch to a reverse case of katame. So I'm gonna pull my arm out from around his head and just shelf it with my elbow here on his neck. And I'm actually gonna trade my arm. So instead of scooping his shoulder with my underhooking arm, I'm gonna scoop his shoulder with my arm that was around the head. Now I'm gonna switch my hips to face side control to this direction here. 
This hand that was underhooking is now going to go on top of his arm and pin it to his body here. If you don't have this pin, your partner can actually like kind of twist you up here and maybe connect their hands and do a bridge to this direction and knock you backwards. So it's important that you pin that arm to their body and then now we can start looking for our attack here. Okay. Now that we're here on our side control or our reverse case katame from our side control, we're going to start setting up our kimura. So my hand that was scooping the armpit is just going to slide down a little bit more closer to the elbow here. And then I'm going to bring his arm up and around my wrist. So now my hand's on the inside. It was on the outside. Now it's on the inside here. Now you can't just lock up a kimura and start looking for your finish here, but we're going to experiment with something that I really like to use. And I learned a lot, a lot, a long time ago against, uh, from a black belt that I used to train with named Travis Took. He showed me this at a seminar and I've used it ever since. It's a really cool form of control and we can look for chokes afterwards. So instead of locking up our kimura, we're just going to keep our hand at the inside. We're going to change to a two on one and then I'm going to undo his lapel like this. I don't want to pull it out just enough to where I have some space and now wrap over his wrist and just feed to my hand just like that. By feeding it to my hand, now I have like kind of the same control that I would with the Kimura, but this hand is free. So I'm free to kind of move around, post, and then eventually choke with this hand. So now that I have this nice control here, I don't want to do palm up. I'm going to do palm down. That way I can kind of keep it a little bit tighter with curling my fist to my bicep. Here it makes it a little bit tougher to maintain that connection. You guys will feel the difference in space here. So go palm down, lock up that grip, kind of get it as tight as you can. Now my hand's going to block his hip. I'm going to post up onto my toes and walk around to the other side of his body here. Now that I'm on the other side side control, I can pick him up on the side with that Kimura here. I'm going to use my knee to shelf behind his head and just kind of sit and do like almost like a side control on the other side here. And now that I have like that weird grip on this, uh, his arm here, he can't defend his neck with that hand. So now it's going to make it easy for me now to sink in a paper cutting grip here, which is just a thumb down grip on this side of the collar. And I'm going to sprawl backwards and drop my elbow down to the mat. From here, I'm going to circle my elbow to his ear to get a nice choke here on my paper cutter control. And it's tough for him to defend because he can't use this arm. So, again, we're here in side control. We've got a nice tight side control. We're sitting back. we got head and arm control here. We're going to now control the shoulder, release the head, and trade arms here. That way I can now use this arm to post to switch my hips to face his waist here. My hand's gonna pummel to the inside and post it to his body and clear my hand to the inside. If I need to, I can lift his wrist up and bring my hand to the inside if it's kind of caught. But I'm gonna get that two on one, or that one on one control here. That way I can get the lapel, wrap it around his wrist, and then grab palm down on that lapel. My hand's gonna post to the ground blocking his hip. I'm gonna turn to my knees and then post where my toes are along the mat. Keep my head and chest low. Circle to the other side. From here, I can pick my partner up on his side and bring my knees right behind them. That way, they can't flatten back out. Now, my knee behind my partner's head, I'm going to use that hand, that free hand over here, to go palm in, thumb down in the collar, and then I'm going to sprawl backwards and land on the mat here. My elbow should be able to touch the ground without choking him. So, if it's choking him, loosen your grip a little bit because the choke is not going to be in dropping the elbow, it's going to be in circling the elbow here. To get your choke. So when you get the grip, palm down, elbow circle towards their ear, turn their head sideways, and that's going to get your choke. All right? But yes, sir. If his belt isn't on, would it make any difference? Not necessarily. Even if his gi is undone here, if I'm in my reverse case, uh, I can still Perfect. lock it up nice and tight. It just makes it a little bit nicer if it's on the inside of the belt because it kind of keeps it a little bit more, like there's more friction there because it's got an anchor on the belt. But if it's outside the belt, you just got to kind of like tighten it up a little bit more and it's still just as tight. So don't really worry about it if it comes out of the gi. But regardless, if it's in the gi or out of the gi, you still need to circle around that backside and you can still set up that choke from here, okay? You guys got it? Or do you need to see it again? We're good? Yes. All right, so please, if there's a white belt, a higher belt, please grab them and help them out. And um, I'll be around to help if you guys need any questions. One, two. Yeah, it's not really good through, right? Yes. So what I meant is get lower on the elbow. See how far my hands come through now? If I'm up here by the shoulder, there's not much arm on the inside. I need to bring my arm lower. That way I can wrap my arm around his arm easier.
See all the space I have yeah. versus being up here on the shoulder, I can barely fit my fingers through. Gotcha. So okay. think about that whenever you're not having a lot of space. Maybe make that adjustment. That might help. Okay. The intensity somewhat low for now. We're still warming up. Just break grips, grab grips, move around. on like trying to establish some dominant grips so just so you guys can see a dominant grip is a high grip above the collarbone if I have a grip that's like below my partner's collarbone for me to be able to move my partner around and break his posture it makes it really difficult and it's much easier for him to break this grip so when I get a grip I normally like to use my outside hand to kind of open up the lapel that way I can get a good solid grip up above the collarbone now from here I can really move my partner around much easier than if I had a grip here okay so whatever grips you try to establish try to make them nice and high collarbone and higher so they're considered collar grips not lapel grips and try to accompany that with like a sleeve control like on the sleeve here with a cuff grip or like an elbow control here at the seam but try to get some good grips use it to move your partner around maybe you do some setups for some takedowns but no takedowns yet your partner's gonna be trying to break these grips so popping the grips off and he's gonna be trying to establish his own grips so we're gonna be in this battle of fighting for grips establishing control moving each other around and going from here so go ahead and grab a partner we're gonna get started and uh, we'll, we'll switch after a few minutes one two Time was last time was like a sweet. That was the last time was the handshake controversy. Yeah, right? yeah. Handshake game. Yeah. So, the first detail I want to talk about, and um, actually just uh, saw someone struggling with this, so I want to talk about it. If you can't really fit your hand to the inside, you feel like it's not long enough. It's probably because your arm is still resting up here by the shoulder. In order to get a Kimura grip properly, you're gonna to have to be lower on the arm. That way you can really fit your hand through nice and tight. If you're up here by the armpit, notice how there's less of my fingers popping through than being up here. So slide down, get where your biceps, more on the back of their tricep, less on their shoulder. If you're on the shoulder, you're far away from where you need to be versus if you're higher up where your biceps on the tricep here, then you can get your hand in deeper. Now, everything's the same. You guys are all doing everything correctly, but when focusing on finishing here, let's make sure that we get a deep enough grip. I know I said don't get too deep, but you don't want too loose either. If it's too shallow, when I drop to the mat, no matter how much I circle, I'm never going to finish my partner. So make sure that whenever we get our thumb to the inside here, it's deep enough to where you feel some tension dropping your elbow to the mat. It should be somewhat uncomfortable, but not yet enough to choke your partner. If it's not uncomfortable for them, you need to make an adjustment. Now. And that's also when it's important that you guys give each other feedback whenever you're doing the drills. Hey man, I'm not really feeling it at that point. You might need to make an adjustment and you can help each other out. You can't do that in rolling, but you can do that during drilling. So it's important to try that out when you're drilling. So get deep enough, make sure your partner feels some tension when you drop your elbow. And then the next kind of concept I want to talk about, imagine this is kind of like a blade or even if you're just thinking of it as lapel, you have to drive them into that lapel. That's what's choking them. So if, there's, if that's the blade that I'm imagining and I circle away from his head, I'm not allowing his head to go into the blade. He can kind of move his head to the opposite side. Or if I'm just dropping and doing a little circle, I'm not pushing his head into that any more than me just dropping it. I need to really make sure I drop my elbow and circle heavy to really tilt his head from one side to the other and drive his neck into that. See how he had to circle to relieve the pressure? That's great, because then now with me with my grip here, and me dropping my weight on him here, he can't circle and I have to continue to get my choke. And even if he is circling and I feel like I can't stop him, I can just continue to circle with him to get my choke here on my paper cutter, okay? So now that we covered that, well, we're gonna work part two. This is my, honestly, my go-to finish from here. I like it a lot. Not everyone's comfortable taking the back, so that's why I wanted to show part one first. Maybe for like the bigger, less flexible guys, they like to stay on top and finish the paper cutter. But for me personally, whenever I have my, uh, my lapel Kimura here, and I pass to the other side and get them to their side here, instead of going for my paper cutter, I like to now think, 
wrap around the head like I'm going for a seatbelt, but I don't need to connect my hands because I already have his arm controlled. I'm just gonna get a loose grip on the far collar here. Now I'm gonna set up the back just like I would normally with my, my basic chair sit back take. So my knee's gonna go behind my partner's head. My foot cuts flat along his back. If my leg's out this way and I pull him, I don't have the, I'm on the wrong hip. And I don't have the flexibility now to throw my leg over to this side. And if we fall this way, I could hurt my knee. So let's make sure when we have the lapel and we're all here, when we put our knee behind the head, our foot is flush along their back here. So when I sit down, it doesn't hurt my leg at all. So we're here. If you can, throw your leg over before you sit back. If you're having trouble with the flexibility side of things, just sit down and kind of pull them and then throw your leg over. It's important that you keep in mind that your head's close to theirs. If you stretch away like this and go to pull them, they can shoot their weight to that direction, push off the mat deck, and start to get out because I don't have good chest to shoulders connection on his back. So when you have the back here, make sure you stay nice and tight and pull him with you all the way to the other side. And then you can throw in your, your uh, opposite hook. But from now, instead of throwing the opposite hook, we're gonna keep this loose lapel and start working our way up in the collar here. Most of the time, they'll grab their own lapel or grab our hand. It's okay, we can just kinda keep working our way up with our fingers here, and this outside leg can trap their arm by throwing it up and over the shoulder. Again, this is where the flexibility comes into play, so if you can do that kinda as you fall back and go over the shoulder, it makes it a lot easier, and then you can make that adjustment on the lapel. From here, just keep the, the lapel on this side and then keep the collar here. We're gonna extend our partner, cross our ankles, extend and pull on both to get our bow and arrow finish here okay so my ankles cross i pull on this one i'm pulling on this one to keep the tension on his arm and leaning back to get my finish here with the bow and arrow choke you can't escape the, a similar way but you don't have to go ditch and go to a pant grip there i don't have to no i mean from here the only reason i would want to go to a pant grip is to get like additional like uh, additional anchor and extension where I can kind of torque him in opposite directions. But from here, since I have my ankles crossed around his, his shoulder and I have control over this arm, I don't really need to worry about holding the pant. I can just lean back and I have that anchor here. So I'm fine just to finish from this angle. And I can keep his arm trapped and prevent him from hand fighting and breaking my grip. So we'll do the other side now. We're here on this side and side control. We set up our lapel kimura here my hands go to the mat and i walk to the opposite side i'm behind my partner and i have him on his side it's important that we keep him on their side here if you need to make adjustments on that lapel you can do them from here because it makes it easy because they're on their side but then now just set up your seat belt you don't have to connect your hands just grab a loose grip on the lapel here and bring your knee behind their head and your foot lays flush against their back head close to their head it goes over pull them to this side this is where you can make it easy to throw that leg over their shoulder here. To make those adjustments on the collar, extend them to fall back to the side that they originally were, cross your ankles, you're gonna lean back, anchor yourself with both the lapel grip and the collar grip on their neck. You're gonna pull on the grip that's around their neck and lean back to get your finish with the bow and arrow choke. That's got it, good to go, one, two. Count Films TV, y'all. a few minutes and then we'll get